so today I did have a vote in my Discord here because we are still working on quite a few projects on AutoCraft server. Um, we don't have a finished project yet, so I don't want to make a video like I used to do where I did part of the, um, the project and then do two separate parts. Unless we get really down the line where the project takes like months to do, then I will have to do that. But I, I've really been enjoying getting a whole project done in one episode, which it is usually doable if we have everything planned out. Fortunately for this, we don't have everything planned out, so we're still doing it as we go. And uh, yeah, so we can't really get it all done. I'm not going to force it. You get stuff that's not great if you force stuff to be done. So I'd rather just take the time to do it. And then we'll do some other things. So you guys voted to do a one wide tileable uh, auto crafting video where I showcase how I make some wide, one wide tileable auto crafters. And the other option was just to do a showcase like a trailer for the uh, world tour, which will be next week. So that's already ridiculous. That's 18 months world tour for the auto craft series alone, which is just crazy to think about because I don't even really remember like, it feels like yesterday that I started that, that series, but uh, yeah. So, we'll do this. I have a replay mod going right now, as you can see here. So, I'm gonna throw in some lo-fi. Get to work in today, we'll be doing a repeater auto crafter, which is one wide tileable. This one is doable. Very, it should be somewhat easy, but no dummy items, no filter items. And it's only one uh, output, or one item output per operation. So it's really not that difficult to do, in theory. I always say in theory, because you never know with these uh, crafters, with the one wide tileable. So yeah, I'll do that. I will showcase the full uh, time lapse of that, and then we'll go and break down uh, everything into its own separate parts. So one quick thing before we get started though, I do, for all my auto crafters, I do have a separate table somewhere. I do have a separate table somewhere that shows me the recipe that I need to do. I've seen some people do like item frames and stuff, but this, I think, works for me the best because I can visualize, I can like take the item out. I mean, too, if I do item frames, then uh, kind of just, you know, a bit more difficult to do that. But for me, I have an extra crafting table somewhere uh, close to the area where I can go back to it and refer to it if I need to. That way I don't need to interfere with that one there. So uh, yeah, I can just do this now as well. So basically what I do, if you haven't seen my other one, when I did my two wide tile or my two wide auto crafters, this would I do the same thing for any auto crafter is I break it down into three sequences. So we have the first sequence, which is the first three items here. And then we have the second sequence, which is the next slider. And then the third, for our case, the repeater. We don't have a third sequence. So it's really not that big of a deal. So what we're gonna try to do is make it as fast as possible too. Give it to me an extra challenge because I could make it one wide tie level very, very easily. Add the extra challenge to make it fast. Now that's where you get to, into some issues. So unlike my other ones, I'm not going to be doing uh, observer spam either. I don't personally like observer spam. It just makes everything too easy, to be honest with you. And while it does, it does make it more compact. Uh, I'm not going to over compact. I really just want the one wide high level feature of it. And yeah, so we'll do that. And some things you need to look out for when doing one wide tile ability is cross powering, QC, and all that kind of stuff. Because we are in Java version, we do have a QC here. So if we were to, for example, power a, a dropper in this certain uh, way. So if we were to power up the dropper, say from up here, this does uh, what we needed to do, because it only it powers those block above. But if you see, we put a stone block in there, it gets, just only shoots out this one here. If we were to, however, put a block here and then power this one, we would update this one, but then we would also put this one into a troggle uh, true state. Look at the F3 screen here, you can see that's triggered. It says false right there for both of them. If we do this, so you have an item here. So if we have the piston up here. This is just the something that sends a block update out. We can do that and then they will go to true. If you don't have an item in it, they don't update their status apparently. So if we do that uh, without the piston here, you can see that their, their growth would be on true. I'm gonna update them so that they go back to uh, false here. So you see this one's still true. Because we got rid of the block that updates it, it still thinks that it's powered. But if we go and do it on the other side here, put an item in it, you can see it's still as false. We do this, this also stays as false until we update it. And then you can saw, saw there it shot its item out. So yeah, something you gotta look out for it is QC, uh, because we are in Java Edition. 
The same thing works with pistons. So some of you may know if you do this, this will power both of them. But and you also get a piston that looks like this. But then if you update it again, it'll retract. So this also is the same case. So say we power it like this. This, for our case, will update it because we are in Java. If you're in Bedrock, this bottom one wouldn't update at all. Um, so that's something you really need to look out for, especially when you do observer chains and all that kind of stuff. So especially when you power it like it is right here, this will be an example of a clean or a uh, update that would work here because this one will not interfere with this one here. However, if you have it like this, this will update both pistons, which is not something that you want. You want to have it to where it is like this, and it only would update that one here by itself because this block up here is getting powered and not the one right on top of the piston here. Something that makes them designing these one Y tile level autocrafters fairly difficult because you really only have access to three sides of it. Now I have seen things where you use the one at the bottom here and then use a hopper minecart. Personally, I don't like doing that because then you have to use a hopper minecart here and then while it's not really lockable in a sense because you have it on a rail then, it would then be underneath this dropper which then it would then pull items from this dropper here which you don't want to do. So this one is an unlocked hopper minecart that's just sitting there and it is more and it is worse than just a regular hopper that's not locked at all. So yeah, for our use case here, this is going to be perfectly fine. So the repeater only has three different materials, which is the redstone dust, the torch, and then the stone. So we will configure these however we want to do the um, sequence. So that'll be decided based off if I want to start on this side or this side. Either way, it doesn't really matter. Uh, another goal is to make it non-directional, locational. That just makes it you know easier for the uh, player that would use this and not have any better requirements to have the crafter in a certain location, certain direction, all kind of things. Most people really don't do this because it's kind of hard to do at a fast speed, but I'm going to try my best to do it. It will not be the fastest, let me tell you that, it will not be the fastest that is possible because I know Henrik or someone like that will make it faster and, but they, you know, people design crafters in their own way for their own purposes. For me, one wide tile ability is always huge for me because it basically makes it really really compact it means i can just kind of chain this together like this instead of having to have a one or two block space in between uh, each crafting table which is something i really strive to do now that i've gotten used to auto crafting so yeah get on to this So you saw from the time lapse, I went through a lot, a lot, a lot of iterations here with the just ran out of items here and I was like, what just happened? But uh, yeah, so we actually do need to fill this up and actually give it a full hour test, which I did not do yet, which is why I just saw that get uh, clogged up. It was literally just working before I turned everything on. So I right, let me get these all filled up and then I'll show you the sequence and then we can to the uh, yeah, explain everything and break everything down. We'll do like uh, different sections of everything as well. Uh, that way I can kind of break it down a bit easier uh, in this here. So yeah, that's there and this is the torches. You can kind of see with this, the, uh, the layout I have for the items, 
Now, something I really wanted to do was also get these all accessible from the top. So if you did want to tile this, in the, for instance, you could then just keep it going and then you could have like a shoulder box on load or something like that. Uh, kind of do over there and the other weird weird setup because it would have to have one over there one over there and then one a little bit above almost uh, but at least i was able to keep it all up top which makes it really easy to fill besides having to have this one hopper minecart here there's really no way around that um with this current layout we have here because we have to power this dropper uh in the middle somehow there's no way for us to transfer the signal through as well as get items through here so the only way to do that is to do a hopper minecart, which isn't ideal, because uh, obviously it does have a little bit of lag, but there's really nothing else I can do about that. And with this sequence I have here too, the reset is not perfect. So um, it's a little bit on the slow side, I can tell you that, but still being one wide tileable, I think it's okay to have a little bit of a um, gap between the next uh, crafting operation because obviously you can tile this as long as you want. You can just tile them all next to each other and you will not have any uh, issues. So we can also show that off as well. So for here, let's start off by showing the crafting sequence. So as you can see here, the speed isn't terrible for only having three droppers. Um, it's just the reset that I'm not 100% happy with. As you can saw before the timeless, I was trying to get this so that it wouldn't have any uh, toggle states here. I tried the two piston method. That way it would cycle the items uh, back and forth like this. So that we would basically have an item uh, a block here, which would get pushed down and then pushed back up. The issue I had with that is that we had a double pulse come through with that. Or I was activating the uh, bottom piston too fast to reset it. And but there's only a little way I can do that because I can't block the dropper here for the output. Uh, I like to do this with all mine because it just allows you to tile them very easily into a water stream or something like that. And but yeah, I got the reset as fast as I could possibly do with the on off switch that wouldn't interfere with anything. So unfortunately, it's like I said, about a second between each craft and operation, which isn't great. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna turn the meat blocks down. That way we can tick warp here and see the actual rates. So we're gonna turn this off and then put a hopper with a piece of wool there. And we will do log counter ray. That will show us the hourly put output there. And then now we can just tick warp 72,000, which is a full hour. And it's looking to be around 2,800, a little bit less than 2,800 or so, which isn't terrible for it being one wide tie level. Now it's not ideal. You can definitely make faster ones. Like I said, the reset there is what's probably costing us about a thousand or so repeaters per hour, which is why I don't like having that full second in between craft and operations because the craft and operation itself is only about two seconds maybe a bit less so us having to wait that full second means we could have crafted already half another repeater it would just make it a bit taller if i were to do a different reset instead of taking the uh, reset from this hopper here you can see this is where we're taking and then chaining that over to the reset I would probably take it from this dropper here, but then the only way we could do that feasibly is to take it from here. We would get two pulses, so we still have to do the same thing and make it uh, into one. That would be don't double uh, activate the sequence here, which what you saw in the, uh, the time lapse did cause me some issues with having to rewire. This reset is what I try to get so perfect but it still in the end doesn't work so yeah what we have to do is do the same situation where that would have to be a uh something that turns it into one pulse because we do go twice here so because we do this we have to turn it turn it into one which this circuit right here will do it's called a 
people don't like toggle states because they can break very easily if you unload them. But this one, since it would uh, activate so quickly between, because it is just that, as you can see, it just adds uh, more space to it. And then we would have to add some delay, which then, you know, would have to do that, which means we have to go down further or over further. And I wanted to keep it as close as I could. So the rates do suffer a little bit, as you can see here, we're gonna be around 2770 an hour, um, which is still, you know, pretty decent, especially if you chain this together. So you could have uh, 27 of them if you wanted to supply them all with a copper or a chest minecarts, because chest minecart is 27 slots. You could chain 27 to them with one uh, loader. So 27, I'm to actually get the exact amount here so yeah 2770 um uh, the round up there can't really you can run that down to get it like the most accurate because you can't really get 0.7 over a repeater per hour if i were to test this for longer it would level out at around 2770 um to give it the more accurate but obviously just to get the rough estimate with the uh tick warp there um yeah so you can see the on off doesn't in interfere with anything at all and so if we use 2770, that means we use uh, 2,770 redstone dust per hour. Multiply that by three, you get your stone, and by two, you get your uh, redstone torches consumption per hour, which is not bad at all. So yeah, if you definitely chain this and make it like a whole factory in a sense, uh, you could have a lot of these and then obviously just multiply 2770 by however many crafters you have, and then then you would get your actual uh, output there. It's not terrible, like I said, like it definitely could be better, um, but for the form factor that it is, 10 blocks in uh, length here, and it is seven blocks in height, and then obviously the one wide. Uh, we'll get a schematic of this. We'll break everything down. All right, so I broke it down into all the individual parts, so that the, once we get to the end, it kind of has everything put together. So start right here. So this is the on off switch. Uh, basically what this does is because we have a glass block here. Um, basically when we push it up, that will start the sequence as well. And then when we push it down, it does not uh, activate that iron door, which would then, if we or if we activate it too close together, so say we just send a signal through to start the sequence again, and we retract it to shut it off. It would then, if we had a solid block here, this would, um, Send another signal, basically, and then that would, those two signals would interfere with each other, and then we would have a recipe that would have failed, which we don't want to do. So that's why we do this. Uh, basically, it allows us to have an on-off switch that doesn't matter when you turn on, like you can't make it activate twice uh, at all. And of course, if you spam it, you can then get it to activate uh, faster. This is just so that you don't, you know, turn it on once, and then you turn it off doesn't do anything uh, to interfere with it. So yeah, then from there, this is the same door right here. This, we then put it to into a piston. Now, how do we do that? Well, because that is a very, very fast way to get uh, two items into, or get dispensed right here. So we see we take this one right here and we activate uh, this. You can see we get two items right there. Uh, that is faster than an observer clock because you have to account for the activation of the sticky piston to push that uh, observer up. So it is actually faster. I did test this. It's about four to game six faster for a two items. And all you need to do is just power uh, that really easily, which you can do with anything. With this one, if you were to do the observer clock, you need at least a minimum of two to uh, tick repeater, so uh, that has its own eight game tick delay. So in that time, this already gets done with that essentially. So yeah, that's all good. And that's something I just all find out as well. You can chain this. So say we wanted to um, instead of instead of doing just the two, say we wanted to do four or something like that. So each piston that you do add is an extra. Uh, item you'll get out basically. So the first one is always two, you can always do one. And then say you add another one, you go three, another one you go four, another one you go five, just like that. 
yeah, right here, two, three, four, five. So yeah, we would get five items dispensed. Basically, it is faster than the observer clock until a certain extent, uh, because then the observers in that one would uh, activate faster than this. And they need to account for how many times you chain this, and then how fast that signal will then take to get to, to this as well. So only useful in like two to three to four, I would say, to do it this way. Anything more than that, it just makes more sense to do the observer clock. Uh, but yeah, something I did to find out uh, with that. So yeah, on to the next part here. So at the same time we send the signal over to this one for the torches, we'd also send that signal upwards and over to the redstone uh, dust one here. So if we were to we move this up just for uh, showcase purposes, if we were to activate this uh, because of this extra observer here, and actually this extra observer here, uh, this will uh, slow it down a little bit. So there's extra two game ticks before this one gets in. So basically game tick two, we put this one in four, six. That way we split it out like that. This will also be non-directional because we do slow it down. We go to tick uh, rate two here. And we then activate this. You can see that two game ticks there, two game ticks there, two game ticks there. So it is not as fast as it could be. Uh, this definitely is faster repeater crafters. Um, so yeah, that's just, you know, for the one wide tie level, that's really as fast as you can get it because you can only have one dropper per item unless you do that other thing that I said before that Henrik showed me, Let's put the one below it, then you need to hop, use a hopper minecart there, which I'm personally not a fan of. So yeah, that's how we do that. So the only unfortunate thing is you need to have a hopper minecart uh, in this block here to then take items out of this dropper and then transfer it to that hopper there. So that's the only unfortunate thing and barrels are very, very uh, helpful for this. Because you cannot cross power a barrel like this, so we can actually show this off here. If we were to activate either one of these independently, um, because if we use a dropper here, this would this dropper would also power this dropper here, which is what we want. But then if we do a dropper here, it would also power this dropper here on the side. We don't want that because then that would they would cross interfere with each other. If you use a barrel, however, barrels also give you more space technically, which means you have a larger buffer. Unfortunately, can't really do much about that. Um, but this allows you to send a signal right next to each other without interference. You can see one on the left, one on the bottom and top, then trigger independently, which is what we want. Well, obviously this is gonna be a little bit different because I am placing the rails and they are combining, but for here, you can see that only one ever activated at a single point in time, which is what we want. So barrels kind of act like solid blocks, but they also allow items to be transferred through them, which is why they are very useful in this use case. So yeah, and then you can see uh, over here, at, once we activate this observer or this uh, dropper here, as it goes down, it also goes over to this piston here. And we use the same kind of uh, technique here because we need three stone at the bottom here for the repeater. We chain two of them together, so we get two and then three, which then also goes into that dropper. And we do use QC power, so we don't have to power down below. Uh, we just power here, because this is a hopper. It will not transfer to this redstone uh, dropper one, which is very, very important, or else we would have to activate both of them at the same time, and then that would cause our recipe to fail. So we turn this on here. You can see that if we actually, there is a hopper here that is being a little bit uh, glitchy. Uh, that would be the same for over here as well. I'm just going to break this to get that back to how it should be. Just be careful for that one. So yeah, um, just for purposes, I'll actually do this as well. We don't need to turn it on every time. So yeah, you will see here we get our repeater. So it is a very fast sequence for it being one wide tie level. Um, but however, like I said, the reset is the main limiting factor of it. Um, but yeah, so that's a little bit more to do. Let's go do that real quick. So onto the very last segment, what we're looking down is this part down here, uh, and this part actually up here. So basically at the same time, we need to delay it because we activate this guy down here. We need to delay the activation of the unlocking sequence uh, at the bottom here. So what we do there is we just basically observer. There's really no feasible way to get this signal any better here. Um, just had to be observers, there's really no 
uh, around that. I'm still happy with the amount of servers I used here. It's still, you know, not complete observer spam, but it is, you know, say a lot more than I really would have anticipated for this uh, to be. So, uh, yeah, we take this up and then down. This basically adds six game takes a delay to that. We put a block here. Uh, two reasons why this would be a break, breaking point. We would make a loop here, which we won't want. And then at the same time, we would necessarily make a QC issue to where we would power this right here. So I would leave that area empty. And for job addition, this will still power this piston here. And then we take that down into a three tick repeater, which gives us enough time to basically perfectly, uh, right as the last stone is dispensed, we basically unlock the hopper and then immediately the redstone repeater is taken out. If you were to use a four tick repeater instead, uh, you would see that the actual repeater is there. However, using a three tick repeater, you basically don't see the repeater ever appear uh, in there. And then basically what we do here is we unlock this hopper, which allows the hopper to take the item out of the uh, slot here. If you unlock it too early, it will start taking items out of the crafting slots here. That's so why you have to wait till the very, very end to do that. And then you know, at the same time with this dropper here, this also gets QC powered, which will then spit out its item into a water stream. And then we then take this signal here from the hopper being unpowered, unpowered and powered again. And then we take this and basically turns it into a, a one to, or two to one uh, signal. So we get two pulses from this, the hopper being unlocked and locked again. So we take it into one, basically push this, I just push this block up on the first signal. And then when the second signal comes back, it can't power anything besides the piston. So the piston then retracts it and resets everything uh, back to there. And this iron door is needed because you could use a uh, note block or something as well. Uh, personally, chose to do the trap door, or actually, you need to use either a trap door or a piston because we take the actual signal from the top here. If you use an iron door like we are using here, the signal is uh, faster than the piston because you have to account for the piston to uh, extend. So, we're doing that. And then, right here is where we're back to the start. And you get your full loop here. And that's everything all broken down, explained, in sort of this breaking it down, what it like which each segment does. Um, there will be a lightmatic of this if you do want to get this in my Discord below. Head down there and join that link below. You'll then go to the auto craft or my auto crafters and the schematics uh, channel there. We'll have all my auto crafters I've ever made before in there as well as this one here. Uh, like I said, not 100% happy with this one, but the fact that it is one wide tie level still makes everything more compact and it just makes it more space efficient, which is really the key factor to scaling anything up. So we, I do have a two wide one uh, that I had made before, which is a bit faster than this. However, um, it is not too wide tie level. So you have to basically need three blocks per crafter. This one is only one block per crafter, which we're gonna show right now. All right, so here we have 10 of them tiled all next to each other. Now you will see that this is where the tile ability starts to kick in and make it look just that much better. Especially when we have it activate with two game ticks uh, in between each uh, crafter here. It gives us a nice little wave effect that goes across all of the crafters here. So yeah, this tiled together here, looking a little bit over uh, 27,000 repeaters per hour in this 10 wide area. This is why these one wide tile level crafters that are being developed now by me and some other people with all the other challenges are really, really just kicking up the compactness of every auto crafter that's ever existed. There are much challenge, more challenging to do, especially if you want to get it uh, just you know the way you want it. And like I said, this isn't perfect because uh, we have to use a hopper minecart here, which we didn't have for the schematic. Um, I'll make sure I have that for the actual schematic there, so nobody forgets to do that because it is very important to do that. Um, and also, if you really wanted to have these all in one area, you could take this over here and then put the uh, hopper line there if you wanted to have them all three like that. Uh, just personal preference, to be honest. But yeah. Let's turn this on and we'll see the full repeater potential that we get here. So you can see, we get this kind of wave-like motion here, which is just really satisfying to watch all these repeaters getting spat out and crafted 
all in a one wide tileable area. And then right here you can see the kind of wave-like effect as it goes all the way down. And it just makes it look really, really cool to see all the pistons firing in sequence, all the composters being activated in a wave. It's just very satisfying to do. And if you were to chain this, I would recommend doing this. Um, especially if it's your first time designing a one wide tileable crafter. Having this two tick uh, or observer interval in between allows them, or basically breaks down to see if your crafter is actually one wide tileable. Because if they activate too close together, um, you would see some issues here. And yeah, so say if we had an area where instead of powering it like that, we powered it where that's basically where that sticky piston is. If we then instead uh, powered it like this, with two of them together like this, you would see that we power this one, which also powers this one. And then at that point, when the signal comes through to power this one, it would already be powered by the one next to it, which could then break your crafter, which you don't want to do. So I recommend, always recommend doing it when doing a one wide high level crafter is to separate them with two game tick minimum uh, in between each other, which is very easily obtainable just by doing an observer chain all the way down. So yeah, that's this auto crafter done. I hope you guys were able to learn something from this and keep this, if you look, take away nothing from this video and skip to the end to see the crafter, just be aware of QC. It is something that can break a lot of things, but also is very, very useful in certain situations. So it's like a love-hate relationship with it. Make sure you like, subscribe, all sorts of things. I will see you in the next one.